for Monday, May 22nd, 2023. I'm Beckley Martinez. And I'm Yuki Shaw. Thank you for joining us for the latest news from the Center for Innovation and around Laurel County. This year, Teacher Appreciation Week was on May 8th through 12th, and students at CFI interviewed a CFI teacher and a South Laurel High School teacher. Teacher Appreciation Week honors all of the teachers who have helped the students learn and grow. They put time and effort into their week in order to teach the students certain subjects. Teacher Appreciation Week wasn't celebrated until March 7th, 1984, but then it was moved to the current day in May. Though Teacher Appreciation Day and Week had long been in the works, it wasn't until 1980 when the National Education Association joined forces with the school boards and lobbied Congress for it to become a national holiday. To celebrate this, we are going to ask some teachers about how they feel about teaching. What's your name? Hey, my name is Miss Kirby. Well, what do you teach? I teach social studies. Right now I teach freshmen, and next year I think I'm going to be teaching freshmen and juniors. What inspired you to teach? Uh, has to be other teachers that I've had. Um, it's really cool because I get to work with some of them right now, but Mr. Bird, Mr. Worley, Mr. Tuggle, all the people that really inspire my love of social studies and my love of teaching, I get to work with now, which is really neat. What do you love about teaching? I like my content, I like social studies, but I love my kids. Teachers play a critical role in job and the success of children's education and lives. They're the ones who inspire and guide kids to become the future leaders, innovators, or problem solvers of our world. What's your name? Dina Nance Brewster. What do you teach? English. Uh, what inspires you to teach? I really like literature, and I really like the high school age group. Um, why do you like to teach? It gives me a good chance to pass along um, the readings that have inspired me and helped me develop a worldview. I want the same readings and writing skills to inspire my students. Students in the community had the chance to watch one of the best play adaptations Mary Poppins put on by our excellent SLHS theater program. The play was originally a book released in 1934, which turned into an award-winning movie starring Julie Andrews in 1964 and is now a world-famous musical running 2,619 Broadway performances before closing. Students in the community had the chance to watch one of the best musical adaptations Mary Poppins put on by our excellent SLHS theater program. The musical was originally a book released in 1934, which turned into an award-winning movie starring Julie Andrews in 1964, and is now a world-famous musical running 2,619 Broadway performances before closing. Catherine Fawbush, who has been acting as a lead in school musicals since sixth grade, played the role of Mary Poppins. What made you want to join the cast of Mary Poppins? I was in last year's musical, and that was my favorite thing I had done ever. And this tops it, but I really wanted to join because of I'm doing it the year before. Scotty Vandy, a crowd favorite, joined Catherine in her lead role, playing the fun-loving Bert. Describe your character and what your character does in the musical. So I am Bert in Mary Poppins. Uh, he's kind of like the narrator uh, to some degree, but he's also kind of Mary Poppins, like eluded significant other. Uh, and so he's this mystical, magical kind of guy that no one really knows the backstory of, but he provides so much to the plot and he helps carry it along, especially in Act One. While many people are sad to see the Mary Poppins play go, it was a success. The cast and crew spent weeks preparing and making sure our school theater program was represented significantly. While many people are sad to see the Mary Poppins musical go, it was a success. The cast and crew spent weeks preparing and making sure our school theater program was represented significantly. North Earl High School hosts a coffee cafe every Wednesday and Friday morning. Students are able to purchase a cup of coffee or hot cocoa for $2 a cup. All money raised will go directly to the fundraiser to be used for funding and field trips for the FCCLA. The fundraiser is ran by Ms. Harold and Ms. Dick. The main reason we do our coffee shop is to raise money for um, FCCLA, which is our club, Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. And we do them to raise for our activities and our field trips that we do take. We do plan to do the fundraiser again next year. We might even expand it. Right now we only do this two days a week. We'll see what next year holds as far as time and when we get to start it. 
South and North Laurel seniors walk into nostalgia as they visit their elementary schools throughout May. They got to walk the halls of their childhood as the elementary students cheered them on for their success, even getting to go through the same experiences they did as children. Let's give our seniors some support as they enter into the next period of their life. Finals are at the end of this week, and with that, is it important that students are prepared? Here is Jalen and Kobe with some tips for our staff and students to get through this testing year. Finals are coming up, and it's important that you're prepared for the test. Here's Dr. Davis with a few of his favorite tips and expectations for students. Testing and assessment in the various uh, program areas is uh, being uh, rested, uh, eat a light breakfast, being in a relaxed state of mind, uh, knowing that uh, you, you are confident, what do you expect from your students on the test this year? Uh, my expectation is that every student will do their very best, that every student will put forth their, their, their effort. Uh, I, I think uh, the data is really clear across all kinds of assessments that when students put forth effort, they tend to do better. We've interviewed a few students on how much sleep they're planning to get on the night before finals. How much sleep will you get the night before testing? About eight hours. sleep will you get the night before testing? I'll be getting 8 to 10 hours of sleep before testing so I don't fall asleep while I'm doing my tests. Finals are taking place May 25th and 26th. They are 10% of your grades so it's recommended that you show up and do your best. Here's one last message from Dr. Davis. Uh, well, I, I would just add that <clears throat> We, we've had a, a great success here at our school because our students are willing to work hard and because those students are willing to put forth that effort. So uh, our success over the last eight years is the result of classroom performance, uh, laboratory performance, and because they were able to perform in the classroom and the laboratory, they were better prepared and able to perform on any kind of assessment they might face. So I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. If the KSA is putting you in distress, here's Paxton and Alyssa with an easy and relieving craft to help you ease your mind during this year's testing season. My name is Paxton. And my name is Alyssa. And today we're going to be teaching you three different DIY stress ball techniques to calm your nerves during the KSA. Let's get started. To start, Add one cup of cornstarch and three fourths cup of water to a mixing bowl. Stir until mixture is completely combined. Then use a kitchen funnel or the top of a water bottle to funnel your mixture into the balloon. Don't forget to tie it off. There you go. For the next stress ball, put some pre-made Orbeez into a plastic bottle. Stretch the opening of a balloon onto the top of the bottle. Then turn your bottle upside down. You may have to squeeze the Orbeez into the balloon. Take the balloon off of the bottle and tie it off normally. And that's your Orbeez stress ball completed. For our last stress ball, grab some homemade or store-bought slime and have a friend open the balloon while you put the slime into it. Have your friend let go of the balloon once done and tie it off as you usually would. That's it, you're done. We hope these three ideas gave you guys some relief from the stress of the KSA. And we wish you luck on your scores. We'll see you next time. Bye! Let's check out the opening day of the London, Kentucky Farmer's Market. Rhonda McQueen, also hooked by Rhonda. Uh, Amanda Bowen. Amanda Peak and it's Pretty Girl Jewelry. Amanda Warren, High Vibe Breeze Drive. Uh, Jeff Jones, Trinity Farm and Nursery. You could buy an assortment of things including baked goods, flowers, candles, jewelry, and crochet. What's your favorite part about this event? Uh, I love that it's a local event and it's all local vendors, local farmers. Uh, it's just a great way to celebrate community and Everybody get in together and supporting local. Not all everybody has. Everybody has all the different vendors and crafts and ideas and everything everybody does. It's just awesome. Um, just 
getting to know new people and uh, selling my product. Uh, getting to meet my former customers and, and uh, my new customers. This special event promotes the small business of London. The 2023 Farmer's Market opening day was a fun and welcoming atmosphere and we couldn't have asked for a sweeter community. Now let's take a look at our community calendar. The Laurel County Cooperative Extensive Office is hosting a book club on May 17th at 12 p.m. It is free to attend and each month will be focused on a different book. There will be finger foods and refreshments. Be sure to come out and enjoy the food and discussions. On May 19th, the London Library will be celebrating the 30th anniversary of this classic movie. It is free to attend. There is no registration, so if you want to watch this amazing, heartwarming movie, you better get there quick. It will be streaming from 8.30 p.m. to 10.15 p.m. Visit the Laurel County Extension Office at 6 to 8 p.m. on May 18th for some crafting and creating. For only $10, you will get the chance to slow down and have some fun while working on a stress-relieving craft project. Keep in mind that you will need to wear clothing that you're prepared to get dye on and is appropriate for the outdoors. On May 21st, White Rabbit Records will be in Corbin at 202 Main Street at 7 p.m. For an entry fee of $15, you will be able to watch the performances of The Bands, Goalkeeper, Rough Dreams, Neutral Snaps, and even Tides. This event will surely be a blast. That's all we have for this episode of The Compass. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel to keep caught up with everything going on here at the CFI. Our final episode of the season is later this week, so be sure to tune in. We, we hope, hope to see you on the next episode of The Compass. Compass.